Hey guys and welcome back to the Professor Oak challenge in Fire Ash. The journey continues and we took our first step into Yenova. Starting from Novima town I spoke with the townspeople and one of them gifted me an EXP share. What a nice welcome gift. I was just about to enter the local Pokemon lab when I suddenly saw a Pokemon in the corner. Well, we just encountered our first Yenova Pokemon and it's the legend Zekrom. After that we have a little chat with Oak and Juniper before we head to Route 1. Before we do so we meet Trip, one of our rivals this time around. We deal with him and step onto Route 1. There is an iconic Pidove which wants to join our team. We take Pidove with us and while staying here get a pet rat, Sandile, not Zubat and a deerling. Doing so we also run into an Oshawott. It seems that the Pokemon is belonging to Professor Juniper and after a little chat with her we are free to take Oshawott with us. Before we ultimately leave the area there's one last fight against Iris and after that we enter Accumula Town. While exploring I ran into Team Rocket and after dealing with them we get our second Unova starter, Tepic. On to Route 2 we go for the next city. No new Pokemon here so we go straight for Striathlon City. Within the city area, while fishing in the pond, I added Basculin, Swanna and Alola Mola to my decks. After that I went for the dream yard in the east and caught a Muna and a Mushana. I ignored the gym for now since there was no roadblock so I made my way directly onto Route 3. We find a Snivy here but when interacting with it, it runs off. Before we go after it, I looked into the high grass area for some new Pokemon. Those include Dwebble, Mincino, Darumaka, Damantian, Yamask, Scolipede and Trubbish. When entering the cave I also caught Rock and Roller before I tried to track down Snivy. Heading south we run into Bianca and after dealing with her we can finally add the last Yanova starter to our team. On our way to the next city we kick Trip's butt and find the Pokemon Daycare. The daycare lady gifts us a Pokemon egg, which shortly after hatches into a Scraggy. I entered McQueen City and with seemingly no roadblock before even thinking of the local gym, I exited west into the Pinwheel Forest area. New area, new Pokemon and so I added Cottony, Petilil, Seawaddle, Garventula and Venipede to the dex total. Sadly this is where we run into our first roadblock. And until we get the first two gym badges, we cannot advance further. So it's time for the old game of grinding on Canter Route 1 for EXP. To evolve the Pokemon we got in the section. After way too many Ho-Ohs, I managed to evolve Pidov into Tranquil and into Unpheasant at level 32, Patrat into Watchok, Seawaddle into Swadloon and into Leveni after enough friendship. Sandile into Crocorock and into Crocodile, Dealing into Sauspuck, Snivy into Servine and into Superior, Petilil into Lilligant after a Sunstone, Cottony into Whimsicott, Minchino into Chinchino and since we didn't get a middle stage evolution my Venipede into a Whirlipede, Rock and Roller into Boldor and because the fan game let trade evolutions evolve at level 35 Baldor into Gigalith, Dwebble into Crustle, Scraggy into Scrafty, Not Zubat into Not Golbat, Yamask into Corphagrigus, Tapic into Pignight and into Embor, Oshawott into Duot and into Samurott, and Trubbish into Garbodor. Before we can now take the first gym, we also need to breed Swanna to get a Ducklet and Galvantula to get a Jolting. Wow, that's 55 Pokemon before we even took the first gym of the region already. We now have the choice between the Striaton and the Dacreen gym. Because Striaton wouldn't give us anything basically, we take on Lenora's gym. Defeating her the first time won't get us a badge yet. But before we take on her a second time, we speak with her husband and he gifts us the two local fossil Pokemon. Which of course we have to revive and evolve. Doing so I got myself a Teatuga and an Archon. And after another two annoying training sessions 
I managed to get Caracosta and Arceops. Now, with 59 Pokemon in the region and 553 Pokemon in total, we can now take on Lenora a second time and earn the first Unova badge, the basic badge. Unfortunately, the roadblock into Pinwheel Forest is still in place, so we need to take on the second gym, well, technically the first, to get access. And so, without getting any new Pokemon in between, I traveled back to Striaton City and battled all the three gym leaders, earning the Trio badge. With the first two badges, we can now finally enter Pinwheel Forest, and while being in the area, we run into an iconic Sewaddle. Welcome! I made my way through the forest and caught a gothy tail before I ran into Burke, the next gym leader. Speaking with him will make him return to his gym and I continue my way through the forest. Staying in the area for some fishing, I caught Time Pole before exiting the forest and entering Sky Arrow Bridge. While crossing the bridge, Silen wants a quick battle and after doing so, we find ourselves in Unova's biggest city, Castellia. This city seems to have a small problem with Venipedes. And who's behind it? Of course, Team Rocket. Dealing with them will fortunately solve the problem, and we are free to roam the city. I stopped at a local Pokeball factory, and after defeating all employees, I was gifted another Master Ball for my collection. Before even thinking of entering the gym, I exited the city north and entered Route 4, an area with a lot of new Pokemon. Here I got myself an Elgium, Lampent, Blitzel, Fungus and a Litwick. While exploring the area, I found an iconic Palpatote, who wanted to join the team. And after taking it with us, I fished for a while and caught Frillish, Stunfisk and Beretic. Two more iconic Pokemon are on this route them being Rock and Roller and the Mantian. Another roadblock is preventing us from entering the next city, so we have to join the club battle. Luckily the area is just around the corner and funny enough there is even more new Pokemon to catch here. While being in that area I caught Ordino, Mandibus, Kapchu, Simisir, Emolga and uh, Lavesta. I participated in the club challenge, which is basically just beating a couple of trainers, who could have thought, and entered Nimbasa city. In the city itself there's the game corner, and you know the drill by now. This means even more new Pokemon. I bought a Dino, Zora and Tynamo here. After doing so I explored the boundaries of this new section again, and found myself on Route 5. After meeting up with the champion of the region, Alder, we now find the next roadblock. Until we have beaten the gym of Nimbasa or passed the battle subway, we cannot advance further. Before we return back to Nimbasa though, we stay in the area to capture Pansage, Axew, Panpool, Lillipup, Not Taurus, Pansir and Gothita. Back in Nimbasa city, I try to go to the battle subway, since that is what the god said and, well, we need to beat the gym anyways. So before doing that, as in the spirit of this challenge, now we have to evolve and breed all the Pokemon we got in the section. And let me tell you, Unova has some ridiculous evolution levels. At first, with the evolution stones, I evolved Panpour into Simipur and Pansage into Simisage. Before returning all the way back to Sunny Shore City in Sinnoh to buy a Dusk Stone. With that, I can evolve my Lampent into a Chandelure. Blitzel evolved into Sepstriker after a tiny bit of Route 1 grinding. Zorora into Zoroark, Lilypup into Herdier and into Stoutland at level 32. Gothita into Gotharida, we already have her final evolution. Lavesta into Volcarona at level 59. Remember, scaled leveling and no Elite 4 rematches. Dino into Swilus and into Hydreigon at level 64, which took me about 6 hours alone of ho oh grinding and rare candy feeding. Axew into Fracture and into Hexorus at level 48. Fungus into Amungus. My Palpitoad into Seismitoad. Tynamo into Electric at level 39 and into Electros after a Thunderstorm. Frillish into Jellicent. 
and Algium into Behem at level 42. Finally we breed Mandibus to get a Wallaby, which we luckily don't have to evolve. <clears throat> level 54. To say that this section took forever is an understatement. But with now 600 Pokemon registered, we can finally take on the Nimbasa Gym. Defeating Elisa results in us getting the Bolt Badge. And since we are in the city anyways, we also do the Battle Subway. Which means fighting Emmet and Ingo. Before we now continue our way into Driftvale, it is time for our annual Safari Zone detour. Back in Kanto, the Unova section of the Safari Zone opened. And so I went there and got myself a Durand, Ferrothorn, Heatmore, and when fishing a Cryogonal. Which for some reason creeps me out every time I see one. Breeding Ferrothorn results in us getting a Ferro Seed. And since the Driftwild Bridge City Guard won't let us pass, we have to beat the Castellia Gym first. Easy as that, and after defeating Berg, we are awarded the Insect Badge. For the next part my girlfriend Evil Carrot Sauce will take over, so I can do a short bathroom break. Thanks a lot! Now the way to Driftville City is finally open for us, and so... We ignore it completely and go directly on to Route 6. We can't enter Chargestone Cave yet until we beat the gym, but staying here we caught Carablast, Shelmet, and their evolutions, Excavalier and Excelgore, along with the Sigilyph, another Pokemon which we find creepy as fuck. Are we the only ones? Anyway, there's no Pokemon to evolve here, and so we wanted to take on the Driftvale Gym. Unfortunately, there seems to be a bit of a problem, which we have to resolve first. We take the boat to Milos Island, where the forces of weather seem to be disturbed. Apart from a couple of trainers, we find the weathered trio here, and after capturing Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus, which I personally think are the lamest weather trio in the world, the weather calms down again, and we're free to take on the next gym. Before we do so, we run into Chile for a short battle, and we're now free to face the Driftvale City gym, gym Leader Clay. Defeating him was no problem at all, and in doing so results in us getting the Quake Badge. The way to charge Stone Cave is now free, but before entering, there's an iconic... What? RJ emphasized iconic on the script. Croconok, which will want to accompany us. After we take Crocorock, we are now free to enter Charge Stone Cave. We make our way through the maze and catch Clink Clang and Clink Clang here, together with Dredagon. Before we exit the cave, we run into Iris again, and one battle later, exit the cave and enter Mr. Own City. There's a small crowd in front of the local gym, and since we're a bit antisocial, speaking for myself here, we instead leave the city and its gym behind and make our way to Route 7. We caught a purloin here and entered Mr. Elm Town Tower. I got Solosis and Golet here, along with a disappointment when reaching the top. So, back on Route 7, I ran into a roadblock, which prevented me from entering Twist Mountain. This time it's the club explosion, which we have to participate, but that's okay, since we can now enter a new little area with some more Pokemon. I got Sork, Mianfu, Mianxiao, Timber, Girder, and Throw here, before doing the club explosion contest. After doing that, the way to Twist Mountain is free, and so we make our way through the maze to get to the next city. While being here, I captured Rilber and its evolution Excadrill, and the Conkeldur. Team Rocket is also here, of course, and after sending them through the roof, shortly after we find ourselves in Isira City. The first thing I did was to check out the Pokemon fan club here, and the president gifted me yet another EXP share. Thanks a lot, actually. Right behind the club building is a small cave, and there we find and capture the legendary Pokemon Curum. On the search for the next roadblock, I made my way through Route 8. And while there's no new Pokemon, there's a guy with a ship, which eventually takes us to the next city. If we have the Isiris badge. We can also go a tiny bit further east onto Route 9, but apart from Shopping Mall 9, we run into another roadblock. And so the way to Opelucid City is off limits for now. Luckily, there's not many Pokemon which we have to take care in this section. And so we evolve Purloin into Leopard, Solosis into Duoceon, and Ronicles at level 41, and Golit into Golurk at level 43. Also, at that point, I am incredibly sorry if I butchered some Pokemon or city names uh, and didn't spell it correctly in English, but yeah, Gen 5 was the time period 
where Pokemon lost me basically forever. <laughs> For, well, at least a couple of years. So, I'm incredibly sorry. Anyways, after handling our evolutions, we took on the Isiris Gym. And, skipping Skylar's Gym, earning ourselves the Freeze Badge. The Sailor on Route 8 now takes us to Verbank City. And arriving there, we take a Meloetta with us for now. No new Pokemon to get here, so we take on the local gym and earn ourselves the Toxic Badge from Roxy. Immediately after we leave the gym, we run into Cynthia. She tells us to meet her in Andela Town, which we can now reach from Nimbasa City. But before we actually go there, three new Pokemon appear in Unova. East of Driftvale on Route 6, there's a small cave where we can now capture Cobalion. In Twist Mountain Terrakion and in Pinwheel Forest, we will find Virizion. After getting all three, we can now make our way back to Nimbasa City and take the new exit east. And doing so, we are now on Route 16. No Pokemon to catch here and after defeating a handful of trainers, Andela Town is just around the corner. We meet up with Cynthia, have a small reunification with Dawn, and, because we are here anyway, participate in the Pokemon World Tournament. Defeating a couple of strong trainers, Champion Alder gifts us a TM, but more importantly, Andela Bay now opens to us. But it seems that Team Rocket took over the bay, and we have to liberate it. A couple of grunts later, we run into Jesse and James, and after taking care of them, their boss Giovanni. He wants to use Meloetta to fulfill his plans, but we manage to stop him and free the Pokemon from his grip. Before we leave Andela Town behind, Meloetta now wants to join us for real now. And of course, she can accompany us on our journeys. North of Andela, there's Route 12. I captured a Rufflet here and entered Opelucid City. There's no new gym for us here to beat, but we run into Iris again and defeating her, the way to Ventress City, where the Unova League is located, is now open. Before we do that though, the Rufflet we just caught earlier, we evolved into Braviary at level 54. Which is just way too high of a level to evolve. Anyways, we register for the Unova League. Have our first battle against Trip, our second battle, the third battle, the fourth battle, and our final battle against Cameron. You guessed it, as in the anime, that's where our journey in the Unova League ends, and we place top 8. The moment we exit the league, Sillen wants to battle us for a last time. And defeating him, he gifts us the final and best rod of the game, the Super Rod. We return to Novima Town and have a little chat with Professor Juniper. She tells us that there is a town close to Verbank City that we should check out, to help out the new gym leader there. West of Verbank, there's Route 20, and Team Rocket. One blasting off later, we search in the high grass area and add Ponyard and a Maractus to our dex total. While exploring the route, we also run into N and find a small grove where we can capture Caldeo. Route 19 is west and immediately we can find and capture a Genesect here. We enter Aspertia City. There's a gym here and even if we already beat the league, we handle this one as a regular gym. Luckily, there's only one Pokemon which we have to take care of, and so I evolved my Ponyard into Bisharp. We enter Aspertia City's gym and battle against Charon. Doing so don't grant us any badge, but the White Ruins now west of the city are now accessible. Entering the White Ruins reveal that Team Plasma took over. We have to fight a couple of Grunts and face Colrus, which has Reshiram under his control. We defeat Chorus and Luka takes him into custody. We can now take care of Reshiram and add it to our dex total. I still think that it would be the perfect Pokemon for a food truck concept. Um, RJ, the Reshiram food truck was my idea. But that personal note aside, that's it for Unova. Um, almost. When leaving the ruins, and thanks us for stopping Team Plasma. After that, we run into Alexa which tells us about a new region we should check out, Kalos. While making our way back to Kanto to speak with Oak about that, we do a quick pit stop on Route 4 and get ourselves the last Unova Pokemon we can get here, Victini. Back in Nuvima, we take the blimp here to Kanto and go to Pallet Town to have a little chat with Oak. 
he suggests that we go to Kalos and try the league there. Apart from that, we also get a pair of new clothes again. To get to Kalos, we need to take the blimp again to get to Lumio City. We do exactly that and take the blimp to this new and exciting place. Now having 647 Pokemon registered in our Pokedex and after 108 in-game hours. So what Pokemon are missing now? We almost completed the Unova decks, but one line couldn't be found anywhere yet. Ice cream. Well, maybe in the next region. I hope you enjoyed the series so far, as much as I did. It's been an exciting journey. If you like it, please consider leaving a like here. And if you have any questions or feedback, also feel free to ask in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the Professor Oak and Fire Ash Discord servers. Links of course in the description. What more to say? Until next time, see ya!